the signal me if you are getting me loud and clear. Uh, I'm just here, you know, to clarify some issues in regards to uh, uh, the, the statement from uh, the Lord Mayor of KMC in regards to what has transpired in the National Assembly yeah, uh, during uh, the oversight function of the members of the National Assembly, whereby he was attacking the media and that of the Select Committee on Environment, Local Government, and Ombudsman. So if somebody is getting me loud and clear, uh, just to... Uh, uh, put the record straight uh, for the benefit of the people to understand actually what has transpired there and what uh, Mr. Bensuda was trying to defend himself in the actual fact. And people want to take the matter as a political issue instead of you know, the interest of the country. So just to put it clear for each and everybody to see what, to know actually what has transpired during that very fateful day. So if you are getting me loud and clear, you can just notify me. Okay, thank you, Umar Samate. Uh, I hope I'm loud and clear. But before going further, actually, I will not do justice uh, without thanking the Republic of Facebook, uh, definitely the Democratic Republic of Facebook, which came into being uh, on the second, uh, on the first of December 2016, when we voted in. That was the day uh, the Republic of Facebook too came in, and we assume power on the. 19 of December, after our swearing ceremony, with the able leadership of the president called Femi Mahoney, who is the president of the Republic of Facebook, and our legal advisor, <laughs> uh, Honorable <laughs> Suleiman Buakarba, and we have our vice president, who is nobody else but Musa Susoko, who is warming the seat for Pata to come in. So we have a republic on Facebook, definitely, a Facebook republic. So actually, I will thank you guys uh, for what you are doing for the country. Definitely, this is what we need. You know, if you want a new Gambia, we must take the ownership of the country. So these are issues that we need to discuss about. But before going further, I will uh, play the audio of Talib Ben Suda for you guys to listen first. Then I will give you the facts, what actually transpired. So without wasting more time, I will just give you the audio you hear from himself, Talib Ben Suda, what he was trying to say in regards to what actually transpired in the National Assembly. So I will give you the audio. Uh, we just take, uh, we hear from himself. My name is Talib Ben Suda. I am the mayor of KMC. Um, I am here to respond to the accusations and the allegations made by the HACPEC committee chairman. I want to make it categorically clear that I, as mayor, of the parliament. I have high regard for parliamentarians. Some of the best parliamentarians, I believe, are from the Kanifing municipality. And I respect all parliamentarians, regardless of their party affiliation. However, the chairman of the PACPEC committee has gone to every media outlet to try to tarnish my image and to say that I have been avoiding the PACPEC committee. I want to make it crystal clear but I see no reason why I should avoid the PACPEC committee. Actually, I am in full support of the PACPEC committee. I respect the work they do, and I believe it is for a better Gambia. On council, we have also decided to conduct our own audits and investigations. Therefore, we believe their work will enhance ours. Secondly, I am not an accounting officer. I am the mayor of KM who is elected and is the political head of the Carnifing municipality. Thirdly, I was not the mayor during those years, the years in which PACPEC is interested, which is 2015 and 2016. And therefore, I see no reason why I should avoid the PACPEC, and I am in full support of what the PACPEC is doing. On that note, I would like to make it clear that the chairman of the PACPEC committee should get his house in order because he had originally written that we should show up on the 18th and 19th. Then I got two calls from the parliament saying that this was cancelled and was postponed till September, which is the next parliament sitting. In the same week, I received a call again from the parliament that now they had reversed their decision and we were to show up on the 25th of July 2018 which was a Wednesday. I did show up, 
with my CEO and finance director. They had then asked us to show up on the 26th, which was the very next day, and I had immediately excused myself from that meeting and asked for their permission to excuse myself because the president was coming to visit the Carnifing municipality. The PACPEC committee chair and the rest of the committee members were unanimous in agreement that the presidential tour is very important, and therefore I was excused. I then heard again from them on Monday, the 30th, while sitting at Kairaba Hotel, waiting to inaugurate all the women councillors that were just uh, nominated. I was with the VP and they called me and said they had seen a letter from council requesting, from the CEO of council, requesting that the sitting be deferred because the finance director was sitting. But they wanted me to tell the CEO that her request was rejected. I, they had then asked me whether I was going to show up, which I told them I was unable to because I was at the swearing in of the women councillors. The person on the phone then said, in that case, he understands and I should therefore send my deputy, which I did. Now, I understand they arrived late because of the many communications, and this is why they are upset. I understand they are upset, but I think their accusations are misplaced and misdirected. They should be upset at the administration and not myself as a mayor. I am not the accounting officer of the KM, and therefore I feel his many interviews with the media is politically motivated and therefore not appreciated. And I asked for him to apologize as soon as possible. Okay, thank you very much. You all heard from uh, Mr. Talib Ben Souda over there in regards to what actually transpired in the National Assembly. Okay, first of all, uh, what I will first start with is uh, in regards to, he said, uh, in his first statement, he said that definitely he is disappointed in the PEC and PAC committee of the National Assembly, which uh, Talib Ben Sud, I think he didn't greet the letter that was sent to him because Talib claimed that it was PAC and PEC committee that summoned him to the National Assembly, whereby uh, Talib is telling us that he doesn't even know the committee that sent him a letter to answer to the National Assembly call because PAC and PEC committee are not under the council. They have no business with the council. But the council is directly linked with the select committee on local government and lands and ombudsman. And these are the people that send the letter to Talib Ben Suda to come and answer to the National Assembly. But Talib on his audio said PAC and PEC committee summoned him and they have a uh, misrepresent him and as he was saying so many things and he sent a, a warning to the park pec uh, chairman uh, actually and i will tell Sal ben suda that the man who is the chairman of the uh, the council that calls him is no other person than amul nyasi who is the chairman of the select committee on local government and lands uh, and ombudsman and it was not park pec committee park pec is a person who is chairman is Hale Peck is uh, Peck is uh, Peck is the chairman is Honorable Halifa Salah, which deals with the public enterprise. It only deals with the public enterprise. And what is a public enterprise? Public enterprise is all companies that are paying dividends to government that bring revenue to the government are called the public enterprise. And the Peck is head by the speaker Mariama Jack Denton, who is the head of the speaker, uh, who is the head of the PEC committee, that's the public account committee, but actually we normally call them uh, FPAC, they are finance and public account committee. And these are the people that uh, governs those two institutions. But Talib Ben Suda said at uh, the PEC committee, whereby the PEC doesn't call Talib Ben Suda. So I think, and a letter was sent to Talib Ben Suda, and on the headline it said, you are summoned by the committee of select committee, uh, on local government and lands and ombudsman. So if Talib is coming with a press release saying that PEC committee, then Talib doesn't read the letter that was actually even sent to him because if you read on the headline of the letter, you'll find it there. It was written there, you are invited by the committee on select committee on local government and lands and the ombudsman, not PAC and PEC committee. But Talib keep on saying PAC and PEC, PAC and PEC, you know, shows us that definitely the man is not actually reading the letter that was actually sent to him. So which I will tell Talib that definitely he should uh, uh, apologize. He is claiming that definitely the uh, Select Committee on Local Government and Land should apologize to him. But I think now he should be the one to apologize to the PEC and PAC Committee for you know, accusing them of what they didn't do. 
Uh, so I think, Talib, you can write an apology later to those people and inform them that definitely uh, you are not fair to them. They are not the one who invite you, but it's the Select Committee on Local Government and Lands that invite you, not actually the PEC and PEC Committee. Those are deals with the public enterprises, and KMC is not a public enterprise that deals with the public enterprise. They are organs that provide service for us by collecting our garbage and order in but they don't bring any revenue to the uh, government but uh, the public enterprise and the public account committees are the uh, institutions that pay dividends to the government that bring revenue to the government so in your statement you were mentioning park pack park pack park pack actually it's not park that actually send you the letter but it's a select committee on local government and lands and ombudsman that send you the letter so definitely next time before coming on the press you have to be very mindful of uh, what to say because whenever you say they are on the ARX, you cannot retract them back and it will tell people the type of person you are. So it will be very important uh, if you will be very mindful next time when you are dealing with publics, you first do your homework uh, before approaching the uh, public because this audio is already gone and you cannot retract it back and you are mentoring all the time, peck, 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 and when actually it was not peck that invites you. So these are issues that I already want you to understand those things. It's the, public, it's the local, select committee on local government and lands and the ombudsman, uh, chairman of, uh, in the chairman chief of Ambulunyas, Ambulunyas with five committees. Three are UDP members and you have one uh, GDC member. So actually you see to read that uh, there is no political motivation in this thing because the composition of the uh, committee itself comprises of various political uh, parties which include your political party. And any decision that these people will make, uh, they already discuss uh, in, terms of, uh, in terms of the committee. Not one person will just come with a decision and you are trying to attack uh, uh, the chairman who is just working with his team you know, to make sure that... Uh, the proper procedures are done. And I commend the National Assembly members for the job that they are doing. So if anybody want to uh, if anybody want to make sure that uh, you want to criticize them for the job they are doing, because I commend them irrespective of we don't blame the political party, but I respect the National Assembly members that we have. They are doing their oversight function, they are doing their work effectively, and I have been following their procedures, and they are doing wonders for the country. So it will be very important, at least for us, to give them the respect their desire because we were all saying that definitely the former government and national assembly members we are rubber stamp national assembly members we vote in a new national assembly members that are doing their work as it is expected uh, that we expect we the gambian voters who vote them in so definitely i think we have to give them the maximum respect so uh, in regards to you say uh, in your claim to you say that definitely you are not an accountant uh, for you to come to uh, the council uh, to come to the national assembly to deal with uh, the issue of uh, the and uh, financial activities of the National Assembly. But actually, what ha actually transpired on the first day you appear before the committees of the National Assembly uh, 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 on the 25th with your CEO, the National Assembly wrote to you, and on the letter they said that they need the financial report of the council, that is 2015, 2016, because we have so many bad locks that uh, bad lot that need to be uh, done. So they claim that definitely uh, they need uh, you at the National Assembly, and they requested on their letter that uh, your council is invited. At the, uh, they wrote a letter through the Select Committee on Local Government and Lands. They invite you for you to appear on behalf on, uh, uh, to be appear uh, at the National Assembly to give them the financial activities of the KMC and the financial activities of the KMC. But when you came on the fifth. You came with uh, the action plan of KMC, your action plan, that's what you brought before the National Assembly members. And they have to ask you to go back and bring the pro proper document because they requested for the, uh, the financial activities of the council and that of the financial uh, accounts, of, uh, the audited accounts of the council. That's what they want. But you bring the uh, action plan of the council, uh, which they didn't request for. So they ask you to go back on the 25th, then you come back on the 26th. And you didn't turn out on the 26th. I was at the National Assembly. You didn't turn out. I was there. Why I'm even talking? Because you attacked the media, and I was the first person to publish the story. That's why I want to come here. So you bring the wrong report, and they have to ask you, though, because that's not, that was not what they requested for. What they requested was for uh, their financial activities and the financial uh, report of the council. But you bring your, final, uh, your action plan of the council. So they have to send you back to go and bring the proper document. That was on the 26th. On the 26th, you didn't come up. You didn't show up. And in your audio, you claim that uh, why you didn't show up, because the president was visiting the council, uh, the KMC, and you have to be present there. Uh, which I see that, are you telling us that now uh, uh, what we were claiming uh, the former government was doing, the council was not independent. You are telling us that still now we have the same council that is not independent. 
uh, definitely. That means you are telling others you are still in the control of the executive. Whatever activities that the executive is having, you will be uh, you will abandon the call of the National Assembly just to attend those activities. So, which I see to read definitely. In your statement, you should not even utter such things to say that definitely I could not answer to the National I could not answer to the National Assembly because of the because I, I could not answer to the National Assembly call because uh, the president was visiting the KMC. Uh, the Constitution has empowered the National Assembly. That's why they give them the authority to have uh, the power of the High Court that they can summon anybody, even the president, to come and answer to the National Assembly. And they give them the power of the High Court to summon anybody to come and testify before them. So if those people call you to come and answer, then any matter that comes would be secondary matter. But the National, Ma National Assembly matter should be the first priority that you should be doing. But you didn't turn up on that 226 very day. Uh, why you didn't turn up, you know best known to you, actually. You didn't turn up, but you are telling us that definitely you are, uh, you are not independent. So when it comes to the uh, issue of the president, you should be attending, which we should uh, wipe out from our uh, institution. Definitely the president should not have, uh, the activities of the president should not uh, delay our, our development of the country. If the issue of the development of the country comes, we have to put all those political matters aside and concentrate on the development of the country, and which is very important in regards to the calls of the National Assembly because they want to scrutinize uh, the National Assembly issues. So this is the issue, but you say that definitely you didn't come up because the president was visiting the KMC, and the president too was not to visit actually your council, but the president too was to familiar too with the farm. Uh, the, the, uh, it was a constitutional mandate for the president to tour the country once in a year. Uh, to familiar himself with the people and their problems. So actually, the people could have even represent themselves because they have their National Assembly members and other people. They have their uh, councils and they, uh, they have their uh, alcalos and their speakers. So they could have done that uh, on the behalf. And actually, the president visited the KMC area. That was around 3, and the National Assembly session was around 10 o'clock. So you could have attended that. Then from there, you go and attend the president activity if you wish. But definitely, you abandon that because you claim that the president was coming to visit the KMC. Uh, which definitely I feel that you should not do that. Okay, from there too, uh, you claim that you were not the mayor at the time uh, what the National Assembly members were requesting. Uh, uh, what the National Assembly members are requesting is the financial activities of the council 2015 and 2016, and by that time you are not the mayor of the council, so you don't deserve to go there and answer. Actually, I will tell you the procedure, and it is very important for you to go back to the uh, Local Government Act and read the Act, very, uh, and you understand the Act. It is the present mayor that will tender any bad luck that is left there before, uh, after he resumes office. Anything that is left uh, in the council and it has to be audited or it has to be do anything, there are, account, there are auditors that we call the Auditor General and its team goes to all the government institutions and, account, and audit all their accounts uh, with the audit firms and your internal auditors. They will audit and they will put them in a book just like this one. You see, this is the financial uh, report of the Kerewan Area Council that was tendered to the National Assembly. This was done by the, audit uh, the uh, Auditor General of the Gambia Auditor General, uh, the Audit Department of the Gambia. This is their financial activity that was uh, tendered to the National Assembly. You can see this other one. This is uh, the audit account of Kerewan Area Council from period of January 2015 to 31st December 2017. So automatically you will find out that definitely, and we, those people to have new chairmans, but they will uh, tender those documents to the uh, uh, National Assembly. That's the procedures and that's the language of the uh, Local Government Act. Definitely the present mayor should tender all those documents. Then if there's any question they are not satisfied, then they will invite the former mayor or the former chairman or anybody to come and answer and clarify the issue. But you are the very one who should tender those documents because you don't expect the former mayor to come and walk into your office and start searching for those documents because he want to tender. You will not even trust the person to even enter in your, in your, in your office. So these are the issues that uh, definitely the Constitution see or the Act see it. They, see that they found out that you should be the one who should definitely tender all those documents. But you were claiming in your audio that definitely you should not be the one who should uh, uh, tender all those documents because you are not the mayor at that time. At that point in time, so it's the former mayor who should do that. Uh, so, and you and your team are working on auditing, uh, uh, doing your auditing in regards to the council. And there's no power that is vested in you for you to do that. Uh, we have the Commission of Inquiry, we have the National Assembly Oversight Function, uh, we have uh, so many issues. If they feel like there is some uh, mismanagement of public funds, they could 
call for commission of inquiry to any department. That's not your role. Whatever you inherited from that, go, uh, that institution, that's what you will tender to the National Assembly. That's all. The accounts are already audited by the Auditor General uh, of the Gambia, and it's all filed, and the document is an, on your table, and one is served to the National Assembly, and they have their own record. So all what they will do is, you just pick that document, you go to the National Assembly and present it to them. Then they will scrutinize it. All the answers and the questions are there. Even your response, because uh, upon their audit, they will ask questions, what is your response like when they check your stock and they find out that definitely what they found, they say why uh, this stock is, uh, this is not uh, speaking the language of actually what has transpired in the council and you will have your response written. So you will just read what is on the document. Then if the National Assembly feel that they are not satisfied with the response, they will invite the former mayor to come and clarify the issues. And if they have to come with any recommendation, they will make the recommendation to the National Assembly. So this is an oversized function that they are doing. So actually you claiming that definitely you are not the president, you are not the mayor at that time, so you should not be the one to be questioned. But the act is telling you you should be the one who should present those documents to the National Assembly. So definitely you have to look into all those issues and uh, familiar yourself with the act. Because whenever you talk, as I said, it is on the media and you cannot retreat it back. Uh, so definitely. And you claim that definitely you are not an accountant for you to deal with, to account at a council. Uh, so it looks like you are now trying to contradict yourself because in your statement you claim that definitely you are trying to look at the, the activities and you are trying to uh, account uh, what has transpired in the former mayor's regime. And at the same time you are saying you are not an accountant. Actually, this uh, presentation of uh, the financial activities of the council, one doesn't need to be an accountant because the Auditor General and the uh, uh, internal auditors have already done whatever they will do and they have a document uh, table on your put on your table so all what you need to do is just to pick that document and go and tender it to the national assembly period so you don't need to be an accountant and the act is saying that it should be the mayor and the ceo and the financial director of the institution that should do that exercise so you should be present in regard whether you are a mayor you are an accountant or you are not an accountant so you have to be very familiar with the act so that you will understand some of these issues uh, and you so that you can tackle them so these are issues definitely i would like you to look into the matter and you said on the 31st you didn't turn out because uh, the human council was swearing in kairaba and you could not come there you should go there why should you go uh, abandon the national assembly call when they call you to go and answer to the national assembly and you go and attend the women's council swearing and when the Human Council is not even under your preview, it's not even under your ministry. The Human Council is the Gambia Human Council is under the Ministry of uh, the Vice President, the Minister of Women's Affairs. That's where you have no business with the Women's Council. So why abandon the call of the National Assembly uh, to go and answer to the call of uh, to to go and answer? Uh, you, why will you go and attend the Human Swearing Ceremony of a other institute that is not even under your domain? to abandon the call of the National Assembly, which is the highest institution of this country. So when I heard of your story, uh, your statement and your audio, I will say, wow, this is not what you are saying. I, I doubt why you should even say that, because actually, uh, the Human Council is under the Ministry of, uh, is under the Vice President and Minister of Human Affairs, which has no, which has nothing to do with your council. Don't be misquoted or, mis or misunderstand when you hear about the Human Council and you think that the word council means, you know, it has something to do with the KMC. It has nothing to do with your council, actually. The Women's Council is, is its own institution uh, governed by the Women's Council and under the Ministry of, uh, under the Vice President and the Minister of Women's Affairs. So it has no business with your council. So why will you abandon the call, the call of the National Assembly to go and answer, uh, to go and attend the swearing ceremony? Definitely, that shows you that you have no respect for our uh, National Assembly. Definitely, because this is not, has nothing to do with you and has nothing to do with your council. So why will you abandon uh, that call? You know, you said that definitely I went to attend the swearing ceremony of the Women Council because of the word council or what? Definitely, that's not your domain. That's the domain of the Vice President and the Minister of Women's Affairs. They have their own bodies. They have their own executive. They can defend themselves. They can say anything that is good for them. And then they have a mandate because it's an act that was established by the Constitution an act established by the National Assembly. So you have no business with the Women's Council swearing in ceremony. So why, when the National Assembly call you on the 38th, you fail to appear before them? You claim that definitely you were attending the swearing ceremony of the Women's Council. So which definitely, to me, is an insult to our National Assembly. It's a very big insult, and we are the people who elect those people. So we, the Gambians people, should definitely try to defend 
the verdict of the we need to defend the people that we elected and entrust them with the responsibilities that they are doing on our behalf. Because all of us cannot go and sit at that National Assembly. That's why, in consequence, we have somebody to represent us who will be our mouth, who will be our ear, who will be our hands to represent us. Because all of us cannot go and sit at that National Assembly. So if somebody is trying to disrespect those people, we should all come with one voice and make sure that we condemn the action. But this is not what was happening. I see on the Facebook, people are trying to defend Talib. They said the mayor has spoken. He has responded to these people. You know, I see people that I have, think they could have inspired me. And I doubt and I look at it. Where is the interest of the country? Where is the love of the country? When you should defend the country, you are defending an individual for failing to hold on his responsibility that he was elected to do. Why will he go to the Women's Council swearing ceremony? Is it under his department? No! It is not under his uh, department. But why is he going there? And you all silence about them. All of them are silent about it. I see Nata, I see Pata. They are all trying to defend Talib Ben Suda. For what? And I have high respect for you people. And I believe that you are people who could inspire us. Because we see your efforts during the struggle. But no. So some people who didn't understand, who are not following the procedures of the National Assembly, and they believe in you like I believe in you, will be misled. Is this fair to the Gambian people? Is this fair to we, the young people? You are not fair to us. You are misleading the young people. And this, is not helping. this will not help us. Talib has done something which is wrong, and we should all condemn it. You cannot abandon the call of the National Assembly claiming that you went to attend the Women's Council swearing when it was not even under your preview. So these are issues that definitely we should look at the interest of the country because this country has failed for 52 years and we are trying to build a nation and together we can build a nation by speaking truth to the authority. But we cannot take sides. When it comes to the country, let us defend the interest of this country. But we cannot take sides when it comes to issues of national interest. It pains me when I see people defend, you know, trying to defend somebody, and you know that actually this is something which is wrong, and you try to be defending them, misleading the public. It pains me. Because I have this country interest at heart, and I will never joke with it. I'm ready to sacrifice myself to see that Gambia su succeed. But all of them are silent about it. Go and look at the act, whether the act is, uh, Talib has any... Uh, mandate to be attending that, uh, is it under his preview, to go and attend the Women's uh, Council uh, swearing ceremony, abandon the call of the National Assembly, which is the highest institution of this country. That's why the Constitution empowered them and give them the power of the High Court. But he abandoned it. And we, they are silent about it. They are trying to defend it. Where is the interest of the country? Where is the love of the country? And Talib men and made an audio trying to defend himself. That yes, I went to attend where the vice president was in attendance. So if the vice president is there, that means you should be there. Because it is under the preview of the vice president, that's why he is there. But it's not under your preview. Why should you be there when the National Assembly call you? You didn't come. You said you received a call that if you cannot come, then your uh, National Assembly member, uh, your deputy should come. Ask your deputy. I met him in the National Assembly. That committee should sit at 10 o'clock. Your deputy came in with time. I met with him. We greeted each other. I accompanied him to the chairman of the select committee on local government and lands, Amul Nyas. And they stood. They spoke. Amul told him, definitely, we should sit at 10 o'clock. We waited for you. Just now you are coming. At 1 o'clock, he arrived when the sitting should be at 10 o'clock. Because the park should take occupy that uh, hall where they are. No, the park should sit at 1 o'clock to deal with uh, uh, Navek. Uh, Navek. Uh, sorry, Gambia Ports Authority should appear before the Public Enterprise Committee. And they are all using the same office. That's why they said the local government should come at 10 o'clock and they will be done before 1 o'clock so that the PEC will come in with the Ports Authority for their oversight functions. Your mayor, deputy mayor came in at 1 o'clock when the National Assembly Committee had already made a decision. And that decision was not made singly by Amul Nyas. That decision was made in consultation with the committee because whatever decision they will make, because I respect those National Assembly members and I'm seeing definitely they are doing what we elected them for.
I have been following the procedures from day one. From the speaker up to the last person of that National Assembly members, up to the nominators are doing tremendous work for this country. And we must commend them for the wonderful job they are doing for the interests of this country. So when they found out that definitely you didn't come, they have to sack all the, uh, all the journalists outside. They said has a committee to come with decision in regards to the council's issue. And upon their discussion, they invited the journalists to tell them what decision they, to inform them the decision they have came up. And that was a decision made by all the uh, committee, all the six-man committee that constitutes the select committee on local government and lands and ombudsman, and which you have three members of your UDP in that committee. So this was not a decision singly made by Amul Nyas. He's just a chairman, but he cannot make any decision. It has to be a decision that they must sit and agree upon it. And this was agreed that they will send a warning letter to your, your office because the issues that you get are, are very, are very they, do, they cannot even, they, they, they didn't accept the excuse that you give out. So they came with a warning, they sent a warning, they said they will communicate with you and they, it was communicated to your deputy. Let them definitely, we have already rise up. The peg is coming in. But we are sending a warning letter to you people to appear before us. Because now the National Assembly is going for research. They are not going to sit again until September. And we could have done with the councils because Kerouan Area Council appeared before them, there was no noise. Brikama Area Council appeared before them, there was no noise. Basse Area Council appeared before them, there was no noise. Kuntaur Area Council appeared before them, there is no noise. Why KMC should appear and there is noise? People should ask this question. And all those people are newly elected chairmen. But they are presenting the financial activities that they are not, by that time they were not in office. But they understand what they should do. So they just go and pick the report that was already done by the auditors and go and tender to the National Assembly. And if National Assembly feel that they should ask more questions or they are not satisfied with what has been done, they will invite the former mayors or the former chairmen to come and clarify the issue and defend themselves. But those people appear. So definitely... I don't think that definitely the, 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 the select committee should apologize to you, but you should be the one who should apologize. But on your press release, you say that you demand an apology from them. And if those people should apologize to you, you claiming that those people should apologize, then you are insulting me. I voted those people in to represent me to do what we expect we voted them to do. And that's exactly what they are doing. And you are claiming that those people should apologize to you. That's an insult to me who voted those people in. And anybody who voted those people to represent them at the National Assembly for doing the job that they should expect to do. So you guys arrive very late. So you can see that definitely, you know that definitely you are not attending that very day. So first thing in the morning, what you should do is to inform your deputy that definitely I will not be going to the National Assembly. So first thing tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock, you should be at the National Assembly. But you have to wait until those people have to call you to tell you that definitely we need to see, we need, we need you at the National Assembly. And that will be the time you have to call your deputy to go and attend to the National Assembly. Why should you wait for them to call you? It's a question we should all ask. When you exactly know that you should appear on the 30th, yet, but you decided to go and attend the swearing ceremony of the Women's Council, which is not even under your, min your department, but under the, minister under the Vice President and Minister of Women's Affairs. Is it that we are turning the KMC now into a political bureau that we all fought for? That we said is not good? And we stood and fought for it? And we believe that we have a new Gambia and everything should be changed. It's what you are telling us. So you deserve to apologize to those people. But not those people should be the ones who should apologize to you. So these are issues that we should confront it. So definitely, this is my side. And you claim that definitely the media has, uh, you attack the media. I was the first person to populate the decision of the select committee. Because the, national, the, 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 the newspapers came 
a day before uh, name. Well, me, the very night, the very day uh, the, 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 the decision was made uh, by, the, by the committee, I went on my Facebook account and I published on the, uh, the decision they made. So you attack them, you say that the media is misrepresenting you. Actually, the media didn't misrepresent you. What decision the uh, select committee came up, that's what is communicated to the media. And that's what the media exactly published. So what is the attack there? And exactly that's what transpired. So definitely the media is doing what they are expected to do. To report back to the people. Because they are the voice of the people. They represent us. So they go there and come uh, and report on whatever transpired during the session. And they exactly reported what was the decision of the committee, which comprises of Amunyas, UDP members, GDC, APRC. It's only Doi that is not part of that committee. But all the other political parties are part of that committee. So the decision was made unilaterals by all of them. They all made the decision. But since Amul Nyasi is, is the chairman, he will be the one who will communicate to the media. But that doesn't mean that he is the one who actually accuses you, but it's the whole committee. And they look at it, since you were called since on the 25th, the manner, you know, you didn't respond because the first day you came, they asked you for the financial report, you came with your action plan. They send you back, they said, come on the 26th. 26th, you didn't come. You said you were because the president was visiting the council. They said then come on the 30th. 30th you didn't come. You went and attended the Women's Bureau swearing ceremony which is not under your ministry. And you didn't send anybody until they call you. And those people when they call you, your deputy mayor arrived at 1 o'clock when the sitting should start at 10 o'clock. I met him there. I know him. He's my relative. But when it's come to Gambia, I don't look at relative. Your deputy mayor is my relative. He's married to my auntie. Who is the same mom and dad with who is the same uh, who is the same mom and dad with my mom? Your deputy mayor, my born blood. But when it comes to uh, you know, the interest of the country, I don't look at family issues. When he met me, he said, "Are you working here?" I said, "No, actually, I do come here." So I told him that I used to appear. I take him to Amunyasi because I know that already those people has closed the session. For him to communicate. And he told him that definitely we will send a, a letter to you people. And the letter sent to you was the same letter that was circulated to the media so populist. Because the media were present. It was not actually even circulated. They were present when the decision was made. That's where they picked the story. So if not, you were accusing Amunyas who went and circulated to turn his image to the media when Amulunyas didn't do that. The media were present in the National Assembly. That's where they picked the story and the populace has it transpired in the National Assembly. So definitely this is what actually transpired in the National Assembly. So just to clear the doubt because I believe that definitely when it's come to the interests of this country, definitely we struggle to have this democracy uh, and to have a good government uh, whereby the institution will serve the purpose why they are there. So definitely it should be everybody's responsibility, responsibility to definitely res represent the interests of this country. So that's what my stand is. And I always keep on saying this and I will say it again. Even the party that I belong to, any day I see that definitely these people are not no more serving the interests of this country, that will be the day I will say bye-bye to the party. My being in politics is not about following a personality or following a political party, but my being into politics is following the interests of this country. And I see totally that the party that I'm following, I see that definitely they are doing what I expected definitely a political party should do. That's why I'm following them. But any day I see that they live that way, definitely I'm saying bye-bye to them. And this is would be each and every one of us should definitely follow this way. That is politics. But politicians should not be a demigods. We should not worship them. They are just public trustees. It's because of my power and your power that put them into that office. So they cannot be our demigods. They cannot be above us. So these are issues definitely we should tackle. So I'm sorry if I may come here and 
say blunders, you know. But definitely, I just want to set the record straight. That's why I say that I feel it deemed necessary, at least, to come on the social media platform. Because since I'm seeing it in the social media, people are trying to defend and, and trying to distort the fact actually what actually transpires. So I take it deemed upon myself as a concerned Gambian, definitely, to come uh, uh, to uh, this platform, at least, to share with you definitely what actually transpires uh, in the uh, National Assembly, definitely, at least. Uh, for you people to know actually what actually transpired in the National Assembly for the interests of this country. And if I may say any word that Mr. Ben Suda might feel offended, definitely I am human and definitely I'm not perfect, but definitely I feel definitely we should speak through to the authority in respect of who is the person, definitely because it's because of us that's why you are in that office. So definitely we should be telling you the truth. So if I may say something that you feel like definitely is offended, definitely that's not my intention, but definitely just to set the record straight. You should be the one who should apologize to those people, but not uh, the select committee. And I will defend those people because we entrust them to do that service for us. And exactly that's what the National Assembly is doing. And I respect them and I congratulate each and every member of the National Assembly. And I want you people to join me to congratulate them for the job they are doing. They are doing a wonderful job in respect of their party affiliation. You go to the National Assembly, you don't see party colors there, which is very unique, and I support them. They represent the interests of this country, and I love them for that, and I commend them for the job they are doing, and I'm very grateful to the National Assembly from the speaker up to the last person, definitely. This is the institution that we definitely want, uh, and this is what we wanted. So you cannot ignore the call of the National Assembly to go and attend to other matters that are not even related to your issues, and you claim that the National Assembly should apologize to you. You should be the one who should apologize to the National Assembly, uh, definitely. And you should apologize to the PEC and PAC committee, too, of the National Assembly. They are not the one who summon you, but it's a select committee on local government and lands and the ombudsman. They deal with the council. The PEC and, pop, uh, the, PEC and the PAC are the institutions that deal with the public enterprises. When you talk about the public enterprise, these are institutions like NAVEC, Ports, GRA, and etc. Civil aviation, the police that pay dividends to the government. When you talk about the uh, pe 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 the park, that is the public account uh, committee, uh, that's chaired by the speaker, and the park is chaired by Halifa Shalla. These are not the people who uh, summon you, but is the. <laughs> Uh, is the select committee on local government lands and ombudsman and you should write an apology letter to those people and apologize them that definitely uh, for accusing them for what they don't do uh, and you should apologize to the select committee on local government and lands for saying that for accusing them for misrepresenting you definitely they are not misrepresenting you but definitely they are saying the fact because your institution failed to answer to their call on two occasions to three occasions and the excuses that you give are not excuses that are very genuine so if you wish to take part in, uh, in this discussion too, uh, definitely you can just send in your request. And if you don't want, this is all what I have for you. And together we build a better Gambia. And thank you each and everybody who take your time uh, to listen to me. Definitely I know that I'm not perfect and I'm just learning. I'm somebody who is learning every day and night. And you are the people who listen to me are more perfect than me, more intelligent than me. And you know more than me. But just the little that I know, I believe that definitely I should share. And I'm telling you that definitely I'm learning from you people. I'm learning every day and night, and I'll continue learning. My intention is to continue learning, and that's what I plan to learn. I'm just pushing and promoting the party that I believe uh, for this transition period. But immediately after the transition period, I'm going back to school. I want to learn, I want to learn, I want to learn, and that's my intention. Definitely, because the battle of the 21st century is the battle of ideas. And you can have that idea if you are not educated. And I want to pursue my education up to the highest degree that I can have, if God permit me and time permit me. So I am not perfect. I'm somebody who is learning, so I might say some things that are not perfect, uh, definitely, or I might use words that, you know, doesn't truly definitely represent, or I don't pronounce them properly. That's somebody who is learning, you know, I'm learning, I'm learning every day and night. I'm not perfect, and I'm sorry if I may say anything that might offend anybody or use any language that you feel like definitely uh, it is not... Uh